Hi guys, welcome to our digital clubbing lecture. This is going to be a short and sweet lecture and let's get started. What is our goal for today? Well, our goal for today is to understand the pathophysiology of digital clubbing. Then you'll want to know the potential causes of digital clubbing. And lastly, we'll review how to identify digital clubbing in patients by looking at imaging. This is a typical image of digital clubbing that I want you to remember for your exams. You will see this image a lot of times and it's exactly how they're going to look. Bury this in your brain. By definition, what is digital clubbing? It's the increase in an angle between your nail bed and your nail plate. What does that mean? Let's look at it a little closer. This is your finger and this is where your nail starts. This is just like a normal nail. This is the angle they're looking for. So if you draw an angle here, that angle is less than 180 degrees. So how does it look like in digital clubbing then? Well, this is your finger again. And what happens with the nails in them, the nail right here, as you can see, they start getting larger. So your nail bed and your nail plate start getting larger. So what happens is your nail gets big. And what they're measuring is if you draw this angle, this angle is going to be big. That's what they're looking for. As your nail grows here, this angle gets bigger. They're not going to ask you the anatomy of it. This is just what I want you to remember because I used to get confused when they would say, what is bigger than 180? This is what they're looking for. Some characteristics that you need to recognize for digital clubbing is as the angle gets larger, the nail starts moving more freely in patient's clubbing. And then what you notice, this characteristic spongy sensation as you press on the nail, it just feels like it's easily movable. It's called sponginess. The reason you have this sponginess is from the increased fibrovascular tissue between the nail and the finger underneath. The skin at the base of the nail may be smooth and shiny, right? So I know it sounded a lot, but the thing that you need to keep in mind is greater than 180 degrees between your nail bed and your nail plate, and then sponginess. That's all you need to know. And then put this picture in the back of your mind. We don't know the mechanism exactly behind this. They're not really going to ask you what the mechanism is. But it's thought that in some patients with you know, intrapulmonary shunts, the platelets and the megakaryocytes become lodged in your digital vasculature, so in a little vasculature in your finger. And because these are megakaryocytes and pl platelets, they release growth factors. One of them is plate drive growth factor. And the other thing they release in the vasculature is vascular endothelial growth factor. And this leads to ultimately to the growth of those fingernails as you saw in the pictures. This is the big kind of crux of what you need to know. And this is the high yield part of this lecture. What conditions are associated with digital clubbing? There are a lot of these, but let's touch on just a few. First, digital clubbing can be hereditary or acquired. The causes include respiratory diseases, so idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or IPF, other cyanotic diseases such as uh, you know cyanotic congenital heart disease, other cardiovascular diseases that lead to issues with your oxygenation, infections in the lungs such as lung abscesses or tuberculosis, and some patients with inflammatory bowel disease tend to get this as well. But the key is it's not typically associated with COPD or asthma. So if you're thinking, oh, so whoever has low oxygen is going to have digital clubbing, patients with COPD and asthma have hypoxia issues, but they don't get this digital clubbing. The simple way I want you to remember this is that digital clubbing is usually associated with some sort of lung pathology that cause hypoxemia. What is hypoxemia? It's a low oxygen content in the blood. Or it can be caused by a heart disease that causes hypoxemia. Remember, hypoxemia is low oxygen in the blood. Not hypoxia. Hypoxia is low oxygen saturation, which is what you see when you put the pulse oximetry, for example, on your finger. Different things. Hypoxemia, low oxygen in the blood. Lung cancer and cystic fibrosis are high yield facts that you need to know that is associated with digital clubbing. And remember, COPD or asthma don't cause digital clubbing. Another high yield fact that I want you to remember is hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. What, what do you see hypertrophic osteoarthropathy? Remember, in lung cancer patients, it's a perineoplastic syndrome where they get clubbing 
and peristitis of the small hand joints, especially in your distal interphalangeal joints or the DIPs. So these are patients that you see with lung adenocarcinomas who get bony growth and they get digital clubbing. Think of lung adenocarcinoma. Let's finish our lecture with a quick quiz. Digital clubbing is an increase in the angle between what parts of the nail? Well, if you said the nail bed and the nail plate, you are correct. It's greater than 180 degrees, and that's all you need to know. So what did we learn today? What we learned that is digital clubbing is an increase in the angle between the nail plate and nail bed greater than 180 degrees. Nobody knows the mechanisms, but we think that megakaryocytes and platelets get stuck in finger vasculature near the nails and release growth factors caused by various conditions that lead to hypoxemia, such as lung and the heart, but not COPD and or asthma. Hope you liked the lecture. Give it a thumbs up below. See you guys soon.